Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, what I have here for you guys is the Yamaha P515B. The B stands for the color, and this one is black. Since I've done the original video of the Yamaha P125B, you guys have basically been requesting me to do the entire P series lineup of digital pianos, which includes the P45, the P121, the DGX 660, the P125, and at the top of the tier list for this class of instruments, the P515. So in today's video, I'll be taking a look at this instrument and seeing what exactly I think of it. Now, yes, I have done already a, I have already done a video of one of these, and that was done at the 2020 NAMM show. However, the NAMM show isn't really the best environment to get a feel for a digital piano. I only had headphones there, so I wasn't able to check out the uh, internal speakers and see how those sounded, and I also didn't get that much time with the instrument. So here at the studio, I'll have more time to learn more about the instrument and really get a true feeling for how I like it. But I'm thinking that this video will overall be pretty positive because at the NAMM show I liked it. And if I'm able to form a positive opinion about something in a very small amount of time, chances are it's going to be pretty good. And also it's Yamaha and their products tend to be overall quite nice. I have had a few accusations here, of there, uh, here and there of being affiliated with Yamaha or being paid by Yamaha to do these videos and say nice things about them. And that isn't true. I purchased this P515B like I have all of the digital pianos I've reviewed so far of the uh, on my channel. I purchased this with my own money on the open market, and the only shout out or really anything I need to do here is I do want to give a quick shout out to my friends at Morel Music in Bristol, Tennessee. Um, I've been working closely with them to purchase these keyboards, but I am not getting free instruments from them. Basically, they have this cool program where I can call them up and then order something through the phone, and then they will call me back when it's in stock and I can come pick it up, which I think is really great and super handy. So that's one reason among many that I've been purchasing instruments through them. So I just thought I'd give them a quick shout out before opening up this box and so now I think it's about time we do that. We will see here how well Yamaha has packaged and protected the P515 because as you can see there is some small damage to the box. Overall it's not bad um, but there is some small like crunch damage over here. There's also a weird patch back here where it's like it maybe had a hole in it and they patched it up so that's kind of it'll be interesting to see what that's all about and I think there are a couple of more little blemishes like this one right here so we'll see how well the P515B is packaged but I think it should come out perfectly fine Yamaha and the other keyboard manufacturers as well usually do a really great job with packaging up their keyboards. Kawai also has really nice unboxing experiences. I like the way they package up their instruments too. This one has these really massive copper staples and I hope you guys can see that. So we'll see if I can get these out here easily. Uh, if I can't get them out quickly enough, we might cut and uh, reshoot this. This one's giving me a bit of a problem here. So maybe we'll come back here and see if I can't get these out uh, quicker off camera. So, yep, I did turn off the camera to, uh, to get those uh, staples out of the box. They did hold on there very securely. But now we have the box open here, and this is the way the P515 was packaged. There's a lot of space between the actual instrument and the side of the box, so this minor damage didn't do anything to the instrument. The damage back here was a little bit more severe, and it actually did kind of buckle the box inwards a bit, but no damage was done to the keyboard because there's lots of styrofoam there. One nice attention to detail here that I mentioned in a previous video is this random strip of cardboard that I didn't initially know what it was there for. However, as one of my commenters mentioned, there's actually a special slot in the styrofoam that it's supposed to fit here in. And this is here so that if you're cutting deep into the box with a knife, you won't actually damage the product. The blade will instead go on the cardboard and will not actually harm anything inside. So that's really nice attention to detail. I can't remember seeing that on any other brands of instruments, but Kawai also has a really nice unboxing experience. One of my favorite things that Kawai likes to do with their instruments is they'll actually have a blown up diagram on the on the box showing where all the little foam bits go so that then when you go to package everything back up it's very nice and easy to do. Yamaha doesn't do that and these aren't even exactly labeled what they are so packaging these back up isn't quite as nice as it would be for a Kawai but a packaging still did a great job of protecting the actual instrument so that I think worked out fantastic. There is a empty box that's a spacer here and then underneath we have the music desk and other things. This I think is just a bottom support and I think I'll have to take the keyboard out to get to everything else. So let me do that and then I'll come back to you with this out of the box. So here we have the P515 out of the package and ready to play and as you can see it looks quite splendid. One of my favorite things about the 
P5 on 5 is the way that it looks and honestly I think it has a really great aesthetic. You have this faux wood here on the top that's a nice black, you have some polished um, little accents here on the side, you have a clear music desk, you got these big speaker grills and you've also got interestingly enough a solid chunk of metal up here at the front which has a very nice cold feeling and has a very durable feeling as well. So I think this is a very, this will be a very long lasting instrument and I think if you get one of these it will last you for many years to come. That's been Yamaha's reputation for many years and I really think that this will also fall into that category. It just has a very well-built feel and I really like the appearance and the build quality of it. Another thing that's nice about the aesthetic is it's pretty resistant to fingerprints. Now this of course will get fingerprints on it and the glossy side panels definitely will get fingerprints. But as far as the majority of the user interface and the top of the instrument, as you can see I'm putting my finger all over it and there's actually no fingerprints. The tiny buttons will get fingerprints on them but that's easily wiped off. So I do like the fact that fingerprints don't build up as easily on this instrument as others. My MP11 is completely covered with fingerprints, which is why you don't see it too often in my videos. But this one here doesn't seem to get fingerprints on it very much, which is really great. Another thing that I like, I mentioned this music desk, and this is one of the things I like about this instrument. First of all, it's very hefty. It has a nice heavy feel. It's made of this clear, I guess it's plexiglass here, and it has a pretty nice feeling to it. But not only do I like the appearance of it, but I also like the size of it. It's really wide. This is something I often complain about with digital pianos that the music desks aren't wide enough and this one here is almost comparable to the width of a real acoustic piano's music desk. Now on an upright piano typically the music desk will extend for the entire um, keyboard which well depends on the upright cabinet style but some of them have that and I would love to see a digital piano that has that same feature that has a music desk that runs all across the entire instrument but to be fair not a lot of people would need one that long and Yamaha of course has these speakers that would be in the way of that happening. So I do really appreciate the um, the extra wide music desk. If we grab other music desks, desks for comparison here, this is the one for the P45. You can see that the P45 is much smaller than the Yamaha P515. That's of course to be expected. It's a bit of a cheaper instrument. If we grab the Korg SV1 music desk here, um, which is a more similarly priced instrument, you can see that it too is also not as long as the one for the P515 and also doesn't have that high of a build quality, although of course it does work just fine. And then finally we have a uh, music desk from an instrument that is much more expensive than the P515. This music desk belongs to my MP11 and you'll find the same style of music desk on the newer MP11 SE which costs $3,000, so much more than the P515. And if I put this up here you'll find that it's disappointingly small, so that is kind of interesting that Kawhi's very high quality built music desk isn't very wide which is a bit disappointing in my opinion. So I really like that attention to detail from Yamaha of the extra wide music desk. That is a really great touch. Speaking of the touch, the action of this instrument also has a really great physical touch as well. It's a bit heavier than the action you'd find on the P125 or the 45 or the 121. It does have a more piano-like feel. The keys are actually made of wood, at least that's what the owner's manual says, and if you look at the side you can see that the sides are in fact wooden. Some digital pianos only have a thin veneer of wood on the sides just for aesthetic purposes, but I believe that these are actually solid wooden keys. This is the NW X action, which I think is the same one that is found in the CP88 as well. So it's a very high quality action and I really like it a lot. I also feel like Yamaha has made some slight improvements to it since the last time I've played an instrument with this style action. When I played the CP88 a few months back on my channel, I mentioned in the videos that it had a bit of a heavy feeling action and it wasn't my favorite of all of the digital pianos I was reviewing at the time. This has a little bit of a lighter feel to me and I think it's a bit easier to play than the NWX action on that CP88 was. Also the 515 at the NAMM show also had that same sort of feeling. This one here I think feels a bit more fluid and while it still has a heavy responsive action like you'd find in a piano, I think it's a little bit easier to play than they were a few months ago. Perhaps I just got lucky and I have them with a bit of a lighter action but I feel like Yamaha might be subtly improving these as they continue making them and if that that's true, I definitely like that. Speaking of other things that I like about this instrument, the acoustic piano samples on this thing are lovely. They're really, really good. Now there's a few different ones. There's the CFX Grand, there's the a generic Busendorfer sample. You also have a Studio Grand, you have a Bright Grand, Ballad Grand, Warm Grand, Pop Grand, Jazz Grand, Rock Grand, and Honky Tonk. But my two favorites are the CFX and 
the Busendorfer. So let me play a little bit of my treble, treble test piece that I wrote to test out the treble of pianos. We'll actually start off with that this time and play it on both the CFX and the Busendorfer because I think I like them about equal, although they do have their strong points, which I'll talk about later on in the video. So there was the Brusendorfer sound and the CFX sound on the Yamaha P515. As you can hear, the Brusendorfer has a bit of a more warm, rich, mellow sound, and the CFX sound is a little bit brighter and more oriented towards power. Unfortunately, when you hold down one sound and then switch to another one, at least in the treble test piece, it seemed like it didn't exactly change smoothly. but perhaps it actually does. It's hard to say. When I was doing the treble test piece of transition from the CFX to the Bruce Nerf, it wasn't as smooth as I would have liked, but I might have been doing something a little bit wrong there. Kind of hear a little sound as you change between the sounds. But not very noticeable if you were playing in a live situation and the band was playing, nobody would ever notice that. So those are the two default piano sounds. I'm calling them default to the first two there. And when you first boot it up, it defaults to the CFX grand. Personally, I really adore both of these sounds and I find them to be good for different things. The CFX, of course, is brighter. So if you were to be recording with this instrument and you were you putting it in a large mix or performing it out in public, you'd probably want to choose that CFX grand. It's the best sounding, one of the best sounding grand samples on this instrument, and it's also one of the best sounds bright ones on this instrument. The Bruce Nerve, however, is more warm and rich and it definitely sounds a very, very nice on its own. It doesn't sound amazing for all types of music. I think for the treble test piece, I might have preferred the CFX for the low mid-range. The Bruce Nerve was a little bit more muddy sounding, but certain types of music sound phenomenal on that Bruce Nerve sample, and I will show you that in a little bit. We also have a Studio Grand sampled piano. <laughs> which is a bit brighter and distant sounding. Then we have the Bright Grand, which actually isn't all that much brighter than the CFX. That's the CFX, and then here's the Bright Grand. So that's kind of interesting, still sounds pretty nice. Then we also have a Ballad Grand. Sounds pretty decent. Then we have a Warm Grand.
also pretty nice. And we have Pop Grand. All right, and we have Jazz Grand. Very nice. And we have Rock Grand, which if I remember right, is super bright sounding. reminiscent of like a CP80 than it actually is a acoustic piano and then we also have the honky-tonk piano as well so that's kind of fun one minor little inconvenience with the user interface while it overall is quite simple you use these two buttons to scroll back and forth between the different sounds in each category but when you reach the last sound in the category you cannot use the right hand button to loop around back to the first you have to hit the piano sample or manually scroll back to the beginning to get to the first sound. Just a small minor inconvenience there, but overall the user interface experience on this instrument is quite lovely. So those there are the default piano sounds, and I'll come back around to those and show you why they're so wonderful later. Up next, though, we have the electric piano category, which of course is full of really classic instrument sounds. We've got a stage electric piano here. As you can hear, as you can hear, the action of this instrument really lets you play fast music as fast as you'd like and gives you no problems at all. That, of course, is imitating a Fender Rhodes, and this next one here is emulating a Yamaha DX7. Up next, we have a Wurlitzer. There's another different uh, Rhodes variation that has a really strong auto pan. Then there's also a phaser EP. Kind of like that one. And then we've also got a brighter variation of the DX. And then we have a, another version of the Whirly. I'm not sure why the two Whirly sounds aren't right next to each other, but here we have a tremolo vintage, obviously. Obviously emulating a Wurlitzer 200 that has the tremolo applied to it. So those are the electric piano category, and then up next we have the organ category too. We have a number of different tone wheel sounds and church organ sounds in here too. So we've got a jazz organ slow. We have a jazz organ fast. Then we have rock organ. Kind of fun. Then we have another jazz organ. And up next we have two organ sounds like church organ sounds. That last one in particular is quite splendid, and the reverb on here is really lovely. Continues on and on. To, uh, to access the reverb, there's a dedicated button for it over here. If you tap that, you can scroll up and down and select the different effects of reverb. reverb. Here it is off. It says it's off, but I hear a delay, which is interesting. 
So did they put it? They might have put a slight delay on the church organ sound in addition to the cathedral uh, category reverb to give it extra sustain. That's actually pretty clever. So if you turn it off, it normally turns it off, and then you have different levels of reverb. So it's very easy to access the reverb um, side of things to be able to change that and customize that as you want. You can tap the reverb button again, or hit the exit button actually to get out of the reverb menu. Up next we have a harpsichord sound. fugue there for you and then up next we have a different variation of the harpsichord sound. I forgot to turn the last one up since the organ sounds because of course the organ sounds are always a bit louder than everything else. Up next we have a different harpsichord that has the eight foot and the four foot stop combined. Compare that to the first harpsichord. And here the second one sounds a little bit more full because there's a second octaved sound added onto it. Up next is an electric clavichord, or clavinet as they're better known. Not a bad clavinet sound, although they didn't want to repeat for me. I did just unbox this instrument, so I do need a little bit of adjustment time to get used to the way the action feels, but as you can see, there is no issue. <laughs> Getting the action to repeat there. Up next we have vibraphone, and this is actually a really lovely sound sample. Very lush and warm. Of course, not quite as nice as a real vibraphone, but still not bad for a digital piano. Up next is the strings category. And then a slow strings. which gradually fade out when you let go of the keys with the pedal down. Here's choir, a different choir, and a dark pad. We've got a few different pads in here too. Then we have a light pad. And finally, the last sound here is the bell pad. A little jingly kind of sound. And actually, I lied. This isn't the last sound. We also have the others category, which has some basses. It also has nylon guitar. And steel guitar. tone to it and that is actually the final song in here. So as you listen to all these different sounds it's quite clear that Yamaha's main focus for this instrument is the piano category. The first two sounds of the acoustic piano category are absolutely lovely. I love the CFX Grand and I love the Busender for Grand. So now I think it's time to return to these and play those a bit more. I would have liked to see some slightly more realistic electric piano sounds because those are also some of my favorite sounds of the world. I love the sounds of electric pianos like the Whirly and the Rhodes, but Yamaha's main focus for this instrument is the acoustic piano sound as well as the experience because the action in here is closely mirroring that of a real grand piano or at least as closely mirroring as Yamaha can get into this style of stage piano. 
So let's play a little bit more on the CFX grant and the Busenhofer grant. I'm going to play a little bit more of that Bach fugue. I'll play it all the way through on the acoustic piano sound, and we'll try that out. Now let's try some truly advanced music here and see how the P515 can do some Beethoven. Let's play the third movement of Moonlight Sonata. I won't play it all the way through. We've already got like a 20 minute long video here and that piece alone, that section of the piece is five minutes in itself. But I will play the first little bit here and um, show you guys how well the P515 can do. That piece handles it really well. As you can hear, that piece works perfectly fine on the P515 as well. So it's a really well-rounded action. It can play soft and quiet, uh, soft and yeah, soft and quiet. It can also play loud and fast as well. I turned the volume down there to have my recording still sound all right. But the other thing I wanted to talk about here is the dynamic response of this instrument, as well as the speakers that are included, which I think are easily some of the best internal speakers I've found, certainly in a digital piano of this price class. I am aware that like Yamaha's higher-end hybrid pianos and stuff have more speakers and are louder but for a stage panel like this these are probably the best speakers that I so far have found they are really wonderful they have a rich sound that is very full and really are not disappointing in any way shape or form sometimes internal speakers can be kind of lackluster these ones are the exact opposite and they sound really really wonderful they could easily fill a whole room or even a whole house with sound and they're really really wonderful of course you have a volume slider so you can dial that back if it's too loud and there's also two convenient 
headphone jack right here too. So if you wanted to plug in headphones or even two pairs, you easily could. The reason you'd want to plug in two pairs of headphones is that if you were a teacher and you wanted to teach somebody else and not have the rest of your household be bothered, you can easily plug in two headphones. And there's also a duo mode in here that you can access through the menu that splits the keyboard into two equal halves so one person can play in one octave here and the other person can play in the exact same octave but way up here. So that's kind of cool too. So the speakers are wonderful and the dynamic response is amazing. This time I'm going to use my microphone. I'm going to play the same passage, not all the way through, but just a little beginning of the third movement again. And you can hear how loud this instrument goes. It's almost as loud as a real piano would be. Certainly it's as loud as an upright piano would be. It has a really amazing dynamic response. may have been clipping my microphone, but that proves that this has a massive amount of power, but it's also controllable. If you want to dial it back and play nice and quiet, you easily can, especially with the Busenerfer sound sample, which doesn't go up as loud, but it has a really rich, warm, beautiful sound. So let's play a little bit of music here on the Busenerfer, and I'll show you why I love this sound sample so much. I've kind of held off on it because it's one of my favorite things about this piano here, but it's beautiful for music like Eric Satie. Listen to this. It's absolutely lovely the way that the treble sings out above the chords you're playing just effortlessly and so pure. It's really lovely. Let's try another one here. Um. I mean, in my opinion, that's beautiful, the way that treble can just effortlessly sing out over the chords and have excellent sustain. That is unreal how long that is. And up here where you actually would start to have a shorter sustain on an acoustic piano, it still is excellent. Still pretty good, even way up there. So that's really lovely. Let's play another Eric C T piece here that I don't play too often. Let's try this one. We can also play some music that I believe was inspired by the works of Eric Satie, and it too sounds pretty sweet on here. And one final last piece for the Bruce and Durfer sample.
wasn't going to play the full piece there, but it just sounded so pretty that I couldn't help myself. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound sample. Now, does it sound just like a Busendorfer? No. But you can kind of tell the spirit of the Busendorfer is in there a little bit with that pure crystalline treble and the warm mid-range. Not all Busendorfers have a warm mid-range like this, and I don't know if they're reusing a sound sample they've had laying around for a few years, or if they made a special sound sample in recent years for the P515 and other instruments like it. But that is a beautiful, beautiful sound sample, and I really do enjoy it. Now, to be honest, in my opinion, it does sound a little bit artificial down here in the mid-range and almost kind of reminds me of like Roland's modeled pianos that have a little bit too warm and too round of a sound, but it still is beautiful and I like this sampled sound a lot more than Roland's modeled sounds. To me, this is just really pretty down here, even though it does sound a bit more artificial in my opinion at the moment than the CFX. <laughs> To me, the Boos River does sound a little bit more artificial, but in my opinion, it, for certain things, it sounds really, really beautiful for. I just loved the way those sounded. Um, now, if I wanted to play the third movement, it probably wouldn't work as well on the Boos River sample. <laughs> That is not oriented for a powerful piece. It's designed to play soft and quiet, just like those Eric Satie pieces and other assorted songs I was playing there. The CFX is made for power. The Busendorfer is made for the soft, delicate music that I was just playing. So those two, those two sound samples are by far my favorite sounds on here. Like I said earlier, I would have liked to have slightly more realistic sounds like the Rhodes and the Whirly on here. But if you're playing in a live situation, those I think would work just fine. They'd get buried in the mix and more than likely work out just fine. And a lot of the time, I, I mean, how often do people use the Rhodes and Whirly sounds? I mean, people obviously use them, but I think most people who would buy a P515 would be looking for the piano experience, which I believe is why Yamaha has geared this to be so much like a piano with the excellent sound samples and the action that is closely mirroring that of a real grand piano. It has very, very good dynamic response. It does take a little bit of adjustment time to get used to the way it responds, but it has great dynamic response and does everything I want it to do just perfectly. And if I played on this for a couple more days, I think I'd get even better at playing it. So overall, that is my review of the P515. I think that it is an excellent practice instrument. It would definitely work great for an intermediate to even a pro level student. It really, really feels amazing. I mean, at the pro level, by the time you're able to play stuff like the third movement of Metsonata, you probably would want to have an acoustic piano. But if you wanted to keep time off of your acoustic piano, it's to not wear it out as fast. This would definitely be an excellent second replacement. Or if you're traveling on the road and you want something good to take with you. This is pretty slim and compact. I do like the form factor of it and I think it would be pretty easy to put it in a specialized case and be able to move it around easily. Also like the long music desk, I like the user interface, and again, I like those grand piano samples. So that has been my review of the P515. Overall, I think it's excellent and I really, really love it. A few small things like the road sounds that could be a little bit better, but I think the things that are good on it are so good that they almost kind of make up for those small weaknesses. So finally, I think I'm going to wrap up my review of the P515. It's been asked for a lot and this is kind of my second review of it. I did one at the NAMM show, but now I figured I'd actually get one into the studio and experience it truly hands-on with an in a quiet controlled environment and needless to say i love it i think it's wonderful so hopefully you guys loved this video and thought it was wonderful too if you did you might want to go check out my channel i have lots of cool videos of acoustic pianos digital pianos organs keyboards and all kinds of other neat stuff like that i also have lots of cool stuff planned in the future like comparisons between the p515 and the 125 and other cool stuff too so if any of that sounds cool you might want to think about subscribing and if you do subscribe thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video goodbye